morning and welcome to the St. John's Citadel uh, worship at home today. It's hard to believe we are here again. For those of you who are in the St. John's region, you would know that uh, in this past week, uh, we have been hit with a surge of COVID cases. And as a result, we have been uh, living under some uh, increased restrictions in these days uh, to keep everyone safe and to abide by the uh, rules of our health authority. Uh, today we are unable to gather together as a church and to worship together and we've also been unable to live stream our service today as a result. Uh, so today we gather in this uh, usual format that we did early last spring and hopefully it will be short-lived and we have an opportunity to reconvene our worship gatherings again in the future. Uh, but for now we greet you and we say to you that we have been thinking of you and praying for you in these difficult days. Uh, we want to share with you a few announcements. Uh, firstly, all our weekly programming during this time is cancelled until further notice, uh, as well as our in-person uh, worship on Sundays is cancelled until further notice. Uh, you will also note uh, for those in our congregation that our church office is also closed and our staff are working from home. And though we are not present in the building, we are still available to you. And we want to assure you of our support in these days. If there is anything that you need, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, we would be happy to share with you and uh, to assure you of our support in this time. I want us to, uh, in these days, do our part uh, to curb this spread of this virus that has infiltrated our community again. And uh, I want us to let our light shine as the church in these days, bringing hope and encouragement to those that might need it. And though we are to remain distanced socially from each other, we do not have to be distant. And we can share together, we can pick up the phone and encourage one another. And I encourage you to do that. And if you are needing support, I also encourage you to pick up the phone and to reach out because there are those who love you and care about you and you are not not in this uh, alone. We uh, also want to encourage you to join together and join with us to pray, to pray for one another, uh, to pray for our community, to pray for our youth that has significantly been impacted by this virus, uh, to pray for those who are affected, to pray for our healthcare workers and our essential workers, and to pray for our community leaders and to pray for the church in these days. There's so much that we need to commit to God in prayer, but as we have been learning and as we've been focusing on in the past, that we serve a great, big, wonderful God. Amen. And there is power in prayer. And so we encourage you to join with us in standing in the gap for our community in these days and praying. So God bless you as you share with us today. And may the Lord just richly um, use this service in the simplest of forms that it is today and uh, be an encouragement and a blessing to you. So thank you. Thank you for tuning in. To those of our church members and to those who are tuning in from abroad, we welcome you and we pray God's blessing upon you this day. We're going to share this morning in our call to worship, and it reminds us of God's love on this Valentine Sunday. God of love, we confess that sometimes we are impatient and often unkind. We are quick to envy and find subtle ways to boast. There are times when we are rude and we lift up ourselves as we put others down. Loving God, teach us how to love. God of love, we confess that we are quickly angered. We are quick to record how often we've been wronged. There are times we celebrate even the misfortune of others. Loving God, teach us to love. God of love, we confess that we put ourselves first when we're reluctant to give. We are slow at times to sacrifice. There are times that we hesitate to protect. 
Loving God, teach us to love. Loving God, when we are tempted to judge, to assume the worst, may love remind us to trust. When we are tempted to despair, to assume that all is lost, may love remind us to hope. When we are tempted to give up, to assume it will never happen, may love remind us to persevere. Loving God, teach us to love. And this morning we have our Valentine's call to worship prayer. God of our hearts, here we are. We come with thirsty hearts, praying that your word this morning will satisfy us. We come with aching hearts, praying for your good news to comfort us. We come with overflowing hearts, praying for a chance to share your love. Amen. You who know our hearts and you hear our prayers, be with us now in this hour of worship, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Bless you as we share these moments together this morning. Today at St. John's Citadel, we are commencing our Partners in Mission effort. Uh, this is the time of the year within the Salvation Army globally by which we consider giving and supporting missions. Missions by which others are blessed and we are able to indeed enable them to do so much more within their region. Our sister territory this year is Zambia, so the funds that are raised for our Partners in Mission effort will be indeed blessing them there in Zambia itself. So last year at St. John's Citadel, we were blessed in the sense that even during a year of pandemic, as we still find ourselves once again this year, unfortunately in, we were able to raise $14,845. So I want to take this moment and this time just by which to say thank you for your giving for those who gave last year and for those who will continue to give to Partners in Mission this year. We know that we indeed give because God has called us to bless others as he blesses us. And so and we are going to do that. We are going to come together and we are going to bless others. I came across this poem this week by Charles Miggs and he writes this, Lord, help me live from day to day in such a self-forgetful way that even when I kneel to pray, my prayer shall be for others. Help me in all the work I do to ever be sincere and true, and know that all I do for you must needs be done for others. And when my work on earth is done, and my new work in heaven's begun, may I forget the crown I've won while still thinking of others. Others, Lord, yes others, let this my motto be, help me to live for others, that I may live like thee. May this be our prayer and our desire during our time of missions. God bless you each and every one as we watch this video. Today we're at Nega Nega Community School, one of five locations for the Water Sanitation Hygiene Project, often called a WASH project. This project has three main objectives. One, to provide safe, clean water to the community. Two, to provide sanitation and hygiene practices. And three, to help with food security. We're excited today because we're gonna be hearing from the beneficiaries and the impact that the WASH project is having in this community. For me, the Salvation Army has helped us a lot to improve with water sanitation in school. By introducing the tanks and just building us the abrasion group, which is too useful to us. Clean water can help us to prevent us from being infected with diseases like cholera, 
the school must be clean yes, to avoid those diseases. My name is Kenneth Katongo. For us not having clean water, it affects our education because we can't manage to learn our agriculture project. The Salvation Army has helped us by providing a water tank. My name is Brenda Miti. I'm the acting deputy head for Nansenga Primary and Secondary School, primary section. This school has about uh, 1,014 pupils, 445 boys, and uh, we have uh, 669 girls. Since the Salvation Army came in, we have clean and safe water to drink for the pupils and the teachers. It is very easy for us to have any activities in the school without fail because we have water around. Like mopping the classrooms, watering the plants, even in the school garden. It was difficult for us because we didn't have water in place. My name is Chipo Mompo. I'm a physics teacher here at Nasenga Secondary School. A long time ago, we used to drink salt water, which was unsafe for us and the pupils. The teachers are no longer getting sick, neither are the pupils getting sick. The coming of the clean water has made the school to make a garden. When the crops are ready or ripe, we sell them to the locals and we use the money to buy the chalks, the textbooks, and the pens for teachers and pupils. The Salvation Army is our school redeemer. It is the, the Nasenga redeemer because it brought us clean and safe water that we never had for so many years here.
Scripture reading for today is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, beginning to read at verse 1. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains and have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. Now we see, but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And may God's blessing be added to his word today. Amen. No gifts, no power, no wisdom, 
Balbi's Day, uh, the day of love. There is no passage of uh, scripture more read and quoted for wedding ceremonies and for Valentine's Day than 1 Corinthians 13. It is chosen because it has all these great descriptions about love. Alan Redpath said, one could get a spiritual suntan from the warmth of this chapter. But 1 Corinthians 13 is not some sentimental and flowery letter written to these Corinthians to make them feel good. This is a challenge, and it is a challenge to love. And to love is no small challenge. When Jesus called and challenged his disciples to take up their cross and to follow him, he was challenging them to die to their own selfishness and way of life and begin a new life a new life in which they were committed to live as he lived and as he loved. I tell you to love as Jesus loves, or to love with the Jesus kind of love, is going to cost you something. Or some days you are going to have to eat humble pie, for sure. It is the Corinthians to whom he writes that Paul makes the challenge to love. These were his converts. These were the same people Paul was called to minister to in love. But he often rebuked them as well. And even this love chapter can be described as a rebuke by Paul because they were acting like spoiled children and needed to grow up into maturity, into a mature love a more excellent way of living. You have heard me say before, don't expect to take on the responsibilities of adults and still choose to live like teenagers or think that you can go back and live like a teenager. Many relationships fail on this point. Paul knew to love like Christ was not an easy task. He also knew that to love at all times is not easy. When Paul wrote 1 Corinthians 13, he was not, not offering an, an easy uh, pie in the sky remedy to these Corinthians. No, they were going to have to work out these principles of love in their lives. They were going to have to work at this love and it was going to definitely cost them something. Paul was tuned in to those he served Paul wrote for the moment, but his message is also a pertinent message for us today. Paul faced the issues of leadership, rivalry, partisanship, financial issues, and uh, denial of spiritual truths, similar to today. These issues were dividing the Corinthians. Same issues like inequality of wealth are still with us, aren't they? They divide families and congregations, communities and nations. What Paul was offering to the Corinthians and still remains a challenge for us today is what to do when we become divided. And whether this is in our marriages, family relationships, or in the national and political sphere, the answer remains the same. Love bears all things, is patient. Love is kind, forgives, love never fails, love conquers all, is the message. The question is not whether or not we have differences of opinions. That is a given fact of life. The question is how to maintain a spirit of love in the face of such things. If we look at all the issues Paul faced in Corinth, we can possibly sum them all up as follows. Failure to relate to one another in love. Douglas uh, A. Campbell in his book, An Apostle's Journey, says, It is amazing to observe how many of these problems of the Corinthians would disappear if they would just only be nice to each other. 
It all comes back to this whole idea of gospel hospitality that we talked about three weeks ago in our service, about decency and order and courtesy in our relationships. But the reality is that our relationships fall apart because of our failure to act in a decent manner in the first place. Then our backs go up and relationships disintegrate. Paul offers, offers us a way back through the principle of love and forgiveness. The nuts and bolts of what 1 Corinthians 13 is all about is to pursue a more excellent way of living, other than the path that divides and conquers. The nuts and bolts of what Paul wants to get at is for us to pursue God's path of love. It is Paul's argument that if someone wants to know how to relate to others, to love their spouse, their partner in life, then all they need to do is to look at Christ's example of how he loves his church. The church is really an extension of Jesus himself, just as a person's spouse and family is an extension of themselves. And so Paul goes on to write 1 Corinthians 13 to show this is how you live in a family. This is your guiding light, and this is your goal. These are the parameters of love, says Paul. Paul wasn't writing to a bride and groom, per se, when he gave this very popular exhortation on love. He wasn't speaking to a couple about to be engaged. He was talking to a congregation, the church in Corinth. However, all the principles of love that Paul lays out are certain, certainly amazing ideals for all of our relationships. When you really look at the kind of love that Paul is talking about, we come to realize he is talking about love in the idealist form that he knew. And that love is Jesus' love, God's kind of love, the kind of love we hopefully aim for in our lives. There is a reason why Paul put this chapter in the midst of his discussion of spiritual gifts. Paul wants the Corinthians to remember that giftedness is not the measure of maturity. The display of love is. You can have two very gifted individuals that come together in a marriage relationship, but all their gifts alone will not make the marriage work. A very important verse in his chapter on 1 Corinthians 13, is verse 11, when Paul says, When I was a child, I spake as a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child, but when I became a man, I put those childish ways behind me. You see, Paul had this deep concern that adults might be going around acting like children. We see this too often in the public arena, don't we? even in our politics at times. But Paul offers us the opportunity to grow in our relationships through finding the more excellent way of love. Paul realized this was not a pie-in-the-sky remedy. No, I think he realized how difficult finding that path really is. Sometimes it is very easy to love, and sometimes it is downright hard. And that is why he so meticulously lays out the definition of what it really means to love. In the church, when you consider all the various personalities and convictions coming together, there needs to be this prescription towards love. When you consider all the forces that come into play in our world, the principalities and the powers of this world, the spiritual wickedness, then there needs to be this propensity towards love. When you consider all the dynamics that come into play in family life, from the impact of TV and media to drugs and alcohol, divisions can easily occur and disrupt. And how much we need an antidote of love. If we just consider the, the social and political climate around North America and indeed the world, Divisiveness is not hard to find. It seems without love we, we will destroy the very systems 
we have built and come to cherish. In our homes, we are not only affected and divided because of our own personality types and our own selfish whims and wishes, but all the dynamics of children and work and community, politics and national and international issues all come to bear upon our homes and family life. On top of that, we have a pandemic to deal with. This can divide us and cause us to blame people and to be unkind to them, as we have seen in our own community. We have to show love and consideration, even when the person is totally at fault. And this is a challenge, isn't it? What is the answer? Paul indicates an answer that you may consider trite and simplistic. Paul says, I show you the more excellent way, and that is the way of love. And so when we hear 1 Corinthians 13 read at a wedding ceremony or from some sweet Valentine's card, don't just treat it as a reading, as a nice sentimental phraseology that suits the occasion. Because you will go away from the occasion and you will quickly forget about ever having read it. But if you see that real love is found in the source of God himself, as modeled in Christ's love for the world and for his church, then you may be on the road to seeing what love really is. A sacrificial giving of oneself, an act of the will, and a determination in one's life to follow the challenge of love. And if you sincerely read 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, and read it and read it and read it again and let it permeate your every being, you will realize that for anyone to live and love this way, it's a massive challenge. But it is not impossible. I don't think Paul held up this standard and goal as an impossible one. But he believed if one's life was so rooted and grounded in faith and in God himself and looking to Christ's example and depending on his spirit, one could set love as the highest goal and aspiration of his or her life and achieve it, not only look at it, but achieve it within their life. May it be so for us on this Valentine's Day and may love permeate every part of our being so that we may be able to show in all of our living. God bless you. Now we're going to share in singing. Gene is going to sing for us and uh, the love of God. And let's reflect upon that love again today as she sings for us.
worlds and kingdoms fall when men who hear refuse to pray on rocks and hills and mountains call God's love so sure shall still endure all measure Let's join our hearts together in prayer. Oh God, we thank you for your gracious love. We realize that in Christ, we were able to have love come down and dwell amongst us. And not only came out of love, but in his life, he showed us love and was willing to lay down his life. And your word tells us that no greater love than this than that a man lay down his life for his friends. And we thank you, O oh God, that you have so willed it that we would be your friends, the friends of God. And we pray that in our individual lives that we would uh, be able to see and understand the kind of love that you would desire to have within our hearts and lives. That we would be able to see the way of love in all of our living. And so we pray, Lord, today for all members of our congregation, uh, wherever they might be, and those listening uh, by way of the media sources today, Lord, we just pray that into their lives that there will be the consciousness of your spirit and the consciousness that uh, you love them with an everlasting love and that you care about them, each one, and but not only that, but you desire that your love would rest in their lives and that they would know the power of your love in their lives. So, Father, we would pray as well for our community. Today, Lord, we've uh, been uh, in the midst of a crisis for some time now. And, oh God, we just pray that in the, in the midst of all these things that are surrounding us, that we would have a deep sense of your peace. And for those, Lord, whose uh, families have been disrupted uh, through COVID in the past week, oh God, we pray that uh, your peace, uh, the very peace of your spirit would rest upon their lives. And we pray that as a community, you will give us understanding and grace beyond measure in these days that we might be able to face the challenges that are ours. And Father, as we go out into this week, we just pray that uh, we would so live that your love uh, would be manifested in our lives and shown to others. So, Father, we, we pray these things today in, in the name of your Son and the power of his Spirit, which dwells within us. In Christ's name, amen. So we uh,
do thank you for worshiping with us and we pray God's blessing upon you in these days. And uh, for those of our uh, core community, uh, church family, we pray uh, that uh, God's grace would be very uh, near and real to you in these days. And uh, we would also encourage you if you have a need in your life uh, at, this, uh, at this time and would need to uh, uh, talk with any member of our ministry team, then uh, we trust that you will we'll free to do that. Feel free to do that in these days. So thank you for worshiping. Uh, God bless you and have a great week.